Okay, guys, part four. Um, in part two, because we jumped a around a little bit in part three, remember, but uh, in part two, I went through this, right? Like recognizing um, these behavioral and relational patterns, identifying the, the core of that wound for you, uh, what your unmet needs were, and as well as understanding projection. But um, anybody who's actually doing this healing series, right? You're probably thinking like, okay, once you find that pattern, and then once you find that core uh, wound, what like what am I supposed to do there, right? What, so say I've identified a, a, an unhealthy relational pattern, and I know that that leads back to an unmet need in childhood trauma. What do I do with it? So I mentioned in part two that, um, that, that we have narratives, right? We have narratives about our trauma that are latent within us. And so you may not even consciously have an awareness of, of the story that you told yourself back then to survive the trauma. But a lot of times, you know, we may have felt that somehow we brought on that experience to ourselves um, and that we deserved it, right? that maybe, you know, you felt that you were stupid. And, and so that's how you ended up in the, that situation that somebody abused you or, um, or that, that there's something fundamentally wrong with you. And, and as these, as that trauma happens and we don't heal from it, right? Because again, especially if it's childhood trauma, you're not, you're not going to be able to cognizantly process through all of this without help. Um, because you know, the world is kind of chaotic and just happening to you. Um, but, but these, these stories, these narratives then tend to build onto itself. Right. And so, you know, that, that first initial traumatic experience, um, then we may unknowingly, because again, we're unhealed, um, relive out those dynamics with other people over and over again. And so that can lead to things like overgeneralization. Um, where we say this always happens to me, you know, that, that, you know, men are always terrible to me or whatever. And, and I'm not saying that there's not credence to, you know, certain patterns that we see existing outside of us, right? Uh, like the state of men, uh, in, in today, but what, what we need to focus on is again, how those narratives manifested into something else. Because a lot of times, you know, uh, people's response is to either overgeneralize in terms of, you know, um, this is now how reality exists as an absolute for me outside of this, that I'm unlucky, that I, that I am not worthy of love, that I am not this, that, or whatever. You know, and, the, and that generally that the world is just a place filled with a lot of pain and I am going to be a victim um, to the world. You know, uh, and and these these tend to be your highly sensitive people, though, right? Where where they're going to fault themselves and and at a core level place the blame all within themselves internally. Whereas then, you know, we talked again about uh, attachment styles. The the other direction that you can go with trauma is just entirely avoiding it, right? That they they shut down emotionally and and they lock these these memories and things that happen to them away and they cannot and will not confront for that. So in either of these cases, the overgeneralization or the avoidance, we're definitely gonna repeat the pattern, right? Because because this is, we're, we're disempowering ourselves by, by either avoiding it or overgeneralizing that pattern and saying this is always going to happen. So this is kind of a pattern of manifestation where it keeps happening because we believe that it will always happen. And this is just unrepressed uh, um, you know, trauma that, that as you're avoiding it, again, you're still going to keep repeating that pattern because it's there, it's locked within you. So the, the trick is to rewrite uh, that, that narrative so that it has a more empowering narrative for you. Um, that that we, we go back and look at that abuse and, and be clear with ourselves that we didn't deserve to be in that situation, that it wasn't our fault to be in that situation. You know, um, and, and sure, that, you know, there's, there's things that we can take on, but uh, again, I'm kind of framing this from a context of, of childhood trauma. Um, but to acknowledge that we were hurt, to acknowledge how that impacted us and how we've continued to express that through our relationships. 
And and within this accommodation narrative, you, you know, you I for me, I I tie that very hard into, you know, my spiritual journey as well. That that these were things that I came to this planet to to achieve in terms of healing in my lifetime. So I needed, uh, you know, in some sense to cross paths with these people, with these events, with this type of trauma to be able to uh, expose it to myself and heal it. Um, which then ultimately when you heal from this kind of stuff, it becomes kind of a superpower because once you attach onto that po sort of positive or constructive narrative, everything that happens to you becomes a source for you to build yourself greater. So that's the first thing that you do when you when you go back and, and uh, you know, identify that core wound, that that traumatic incident or, you know, series of incidents. Right. Um, you you have to look at them and you have to deconstruct the old narrative and construct a new narrative. Now, but that's the mental piece. That's kind of the mental piece here. But all of these all of these traumatic events are also held within us physically. I've been erupted so many times doing this one video anyway okay so um yeah so so basically there's you know there's the intellectual you know sort of psychological part of this this healing and process but again as you you're confronting these memories the the traumatic memories because you do you have to go look at them you have to go look at them and you have to let those feelings and emotions um and energy resurface because you know all of this trauma is going to stay locked in your chakras these are chakras if, if you haven't seen them but basically they're energy you know center points in in different parts of our body that um, that will store trauma okay it stores trauma it stores you know distorted perceptions and, and, and all of that and so you know often there are physical expressions of this trauma as well and that that may help you identify again you know where the these core wounds are is because you know for example if um, if at your root chakra or sacral chakra, chakra, um, often those have to do with, um, you know, sort of safety and security, um, core safety and security issues. And so if you have trauma, trauma surrounding those issues, you may have, you know, pain often locked up in your hips, um, you know, or your lower abdomen, etc. And, and that's what the, your body is telling you is that you have, you know, work to do in that area. And so, you know, over here, you can see, uh, you know, this, this chakra, the sacral chakra is needs, pleasure, feelings, desires, um, and sensuality. And so, you know, when, when your, your chakras are out of balance, uh, when you have trauma, uh, you, you know, you're going to see a distortion of this kind of energy from balance to, you know, either hypersexuality or, you know, basically like, low sexuality. So you're ulti ultimately going to have to find a physical expression. And, and I wish I could say it's, it's as easy as going and working out at the gym. And, and it's not this, you need to actually be connecting with some of this energy, right? As you're going through and, and working through these memories and the trauma and let your body physically express this right and and that may be crying on the floor right it may be doing stretches and and you know re releasing like yoga for example um and until you are able to have that physical and emotional release uh dancing i i found is is a really good you know and and that can be messy dancing right right like crying like screaming but dancing giving your body a release as you're processing through these emotions because often it's just that stored up energy that that we were never safe enough to be able to express during the trauma itself so you have to be able to to revisit that trauma and express that physical and emotional you know energy again and again because the truth of it is it's it's not like you go and visit that trauma and then it's a you know you cry and you're a mess and you know then you're fine right often it's going to want to revisit again and again until you don't have the the trauma response to it anymore until you process all of that latent emotional energy and you come to a healthier narrative